Medieval shoe styles varied from England to the European continent, with many of the changes in fashion as a result of the political climate. It comes as no surprise that shoe styles were often set by powerful rulers. In the early 13th century, however, medieval shoes did not vary much in style, they were mainly turn shoes, that is, leather shoes that were made inside out and then turned for use. Children and adult shoes were very similar during this period. The lasts, the molds used to make shoes, were wooden up until the 20th century and were a carpenter's work. After the Black Death ravaged Europe, reactions to fashion from those who had survived verged to the extreme. The Black Death impacted fashion and style immensely, with the former variety of styles disappearing because skilled shoemakers had died in the plague. There was also a redistribution of wealth and changes in occupation, and with these changes, survivors demonstrated their new social status through new styles. The toes of the shoes became much more pointed. England's King Henry IV disliked this style and tried to regulate the practice of wearing excessively long, pointy shoes. Sumptuary laws, laws that regulated consumption, extravagance, and attire, were regulations of social status and attempts to restrict movement outside of established social ranks. In terms of shoe wear, these laws dictated the length of shoe one could wear based on their social status, nobility was permitted two foot lengths, merchants one foot length, and peasants, half. Around the late 15th century, the rounder toe came into fashion beginning in Italy. Boots during this period became full and baggy with an excess of leather being used in their construction. Boots made of leather were worn during winter to protect from the cold and rain. The wealthy would decorate and color their boots and might have also had them lined with fur. Overshows began initially as a separate trade by the mid-14th century and were worn mainly by women. This particular style, known as Krakow for the then capital of Poland, Krakow, or Polanes for Poland itself, became increasingly popular. The style gained rapid popularity in the 14th century but fell out of favor by around 1490. Krakows were worn by both men and women, but the male versions were much longer. In fact, the shoes became so long and distracting that they obstructed the wearer's ability to walk. In some cases, a string was attached below the knee to assist in moving the toe points to enable walking. The string was occasionally depicted in the art of the period. Prior to the Black Death, there was a wide range of shoe styles, as well as more embroidery. The decoration of the period showed the influence of Byzantine style with the best examples of this dating to around 1200. Some shoes even had runic inscriptions or more commonly, Latin, and many embroidered shoes were worn by royalty. Shoes were upturned and pointy until the early 16th century when pointed shoes fell out of fashion and shoes became more rounded. Women's shoes changed the least during this period and were rarely seen because they were covered by long gowns. Ankle boots were worn mainly for work and heavy wear. After the Black Death, ankle boots were laced up at the front, and both men and women used laces and buttons to fasten boots. The construction of Krakow shoes, with their uniquely elongated and pointed toes, was a combination of skilled craftsmanship and intricate techniques. These shoes were not only a fashion statement but also a testament to the craftsmanship of medieval shoemakers. Here's how Krakow shoes were constructed. The construction of Krakow shoes involved materials like leather, fabric, and sometimes even ornamental elements such as embroidery or jewels for the upper parts of the shoe. The most distinctive feature of Krakow shoes was their elongated, pointed toe. To achieve this shape, the shoemaker used a combination of padding and shaping techniques. The toe area of the shoe was designed to accommodate a padded insert that created the elongated shape. Materials like moss, straw, or other soft substances were used to stuff the toe area, building up the desired length and shape. The upper part of the shoe was shaped around the padded toe area. Shoemakers would cut and stitch the leather or fabric to conform to the elongated shape, 
sometimes using a combination of pleats and gathers to achieve the desired look. Skilled stitching was crucial in holding the various parts of the shoe together. Stitching was done using durable materials like leather thongs or cords, and various stitching techniques were employed, such as whip stitching or running stitches. The upper part of the shoe was stitched to the sole, and any additional decorative elements were added during this stage. Krakow shoes often feature lacing or straps to help secure the shoe to the wearer's foot. These fastenings could be functional, decorative, or both. The lacing or fastening elements might run along the sides or even crisscross over the elongated toe. Depending on the wearer's social status and personal preferences, Krakow shoes could be adorned with decorative elements. These might include embroidery, patterns, or even precious stones or metals. Once the shoe was constructed, shoemakers would trim any excess materials, reinforce seams, and ensure that the shoe was comfortable and wearable. During the late Middle Ages, particularly in the 14th and 15th centuries, Krakow shoes, with their exaggeratedly elongated and pointed toes, became a symbol of prestige and status. These shoes were not just fashionable accessories, they carried significant social and cultural meanings that went beyond their practical function. Here's why Krakow shoes were considered a symbol of prestige, the most obvious reason for the association with prestige was the cost of owning and wearing such shoes. Krakow shoes were often made from quality materials, and the elaborate design and intricate craftsmanship required for their creation made them more expensive than ordinary footwear. Owning a pair of Krakow shoes indicated that the wearer had the financial means to afford such luxury items. In medieval society, clothing and accessories were powerful indicators of one's social status. Wearing Krakow shoes demonstrated that the wearer belonged to the elite class. Nobles, courtiers, and high-ranking individuals often sought to display their noble lineage and affluence through extravagant clothing and accessories. Being associated with the latest fashion trends was a way to showcase one's cultural awareness and modernity. Wearing Krakow shoes reflected a willingness to adopt new and daring styles, setting the wearer apart as someone who embraced change and innovation. Krakow shoes were not worn by everyone, they were typically reserved for the upper echelons of society. The rarity of these shoes contributed to their prestige, as only a select few could afford and acquire them. Wearing Krakow shoes was seen as a display of refined taste and an understanding of high fashion. It demonstrated an appreciation for the finer things in life and an ability to appreciate and participate in cultural trends. Krakow shoes could spark conversations and interactions among individuals in social settings. People might inquire about the shoes, allowing the wearer to share stories about their origin, design, and the meaning behind their choice. The decorative elements often found on Krakow shoes, such as embroidery, patterns, and embellishments, showcased the wearer's artistic and aesthetic sensibilities. These embellishments added to the overall appeal of the shoes and enhanced their prestige. The decline in the popularity of Krakow shoes, which occurred toward the end of the Middle Ages, can be attributed to a combination of factors related to changing fashion trends, practicality, and evolving cultural influences. Here are some key reasons for the decline in the fashion of Krakow shoes. The most notable reason for the decline of Krakow shoes was their impractical design. The extremely elongated and pointed toes made walking and movement difficult, especially on uneven terrain. As a result, wearers often needed to tie the tips of the shoes to their knees to prevent tripping or stumbling. This impracticality undermined the functionality of the footwear. Fashion trends are always subject to change, and what may be considered fashionable in one era might fall out of favor in another. By the late 15th century, fashion sensibilities were shifting, with a growing emphasis on more practical and comfortable clothing and footwear. The late Middle Ages marked the transition into the Renaissance period, which brought about new artistic and cultural movements. Renaissance fashion placed a greater emphasis on symmetry, proportion, 
and a return to classical aesthetics. The extreme elongation of Krakow shoes did not align with these new ideals. As societies changed and evolved, there was a shift in the values associated with clothing and footwear. While Krakow shoes had once symbolized prestige and wealth, the focus began to shift toward other aspects of personal identity, such as character, education, and achievements. As mentioned earlier, comfort and functionality became more important considerations in fashion. The impractical nature of Krakow shoes ran counter to these changing priorities, making them less appealing to those seeking comfortable and versatile footwear. Economic shifts and political events during the late Middle Ages could have influenced fashion choices. Societal changes often lead to shifts in consumption patterns and preferences. Cultural norms and societal expectations change over time. The emphasis on status symbols like Krakow shoes might have given way to new forms of social expression and identity. As the length of the pointed toes grew to extreme lengths, some critics began to ridicule the fashion trend as excessive and ostentatious. Satirical commentary on fashion choices contributed to the decline in popularity. In summary, the decline in the fashion of Krakow shoes was a result of changing fashion trends, practical considerations, the emergence of new cultural influences, and shifts in social values. While these shoes once symbolized prestige and status, their impractical design eventually led to their fading popularity as societal priorities shifted and new aesthetic ideals emerged. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.